Warning, parental guidance is advised. You know when you take a shit, right? And the water, like, splashes up and it's your bum. Isn't that just, like, the worst thing ever? <laughs> yeah. You feel violated, don't you? They call it Neptune's Kiss. <laughs> Neptune's, Neptune's Kiss? kiss. Yeah. I'll call it Savile's Caress. <laughs> <laughs> That's only for under 18, though. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about pedos. Oh, man. Um, so, I, w- once, I, once I had dinner, right, yesterday... Uh, my mum's like, Jason, Jason, come in here. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I go into the the living room and uh, she goes up to me and she goes, do you want chocolate willy? She's like, mum, please, no. I'm, I'm not in the mood for chocolate willies right now, thank you. Chocolate was was. Cocklet wazzers. Cocklet bar. <laughs> Cocklet willies. <laughs> Wazzers. Co- you have to get a chocolate bar, Jason. A chocolate bar. Oh Coco Phallus. I just end with Coco Phallus, just to cut on to the next segment. Tripod, 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 tripod. Three cunts in the city here are doing nothing but it's a tripod. Tripod, 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 tripod. Hello and welcome to the. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the tripod with me, your host, your one and only Lone Enigma, also known as Ash. Um, I want to die. Uh, oh. Sitting to my left is that is edgy. Well, that, that 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 Dan introduced the man to our left. Let me introduce him. Yeah, Hi. he is the man of the plan. He's the f- flat cap wearing maniac, Jason the- Comedy Gould. Oh god, Jason Gould, how are you? I thought that joke had died seven episodes ago. Nope, it's because I've not been on for seven episodes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point actually. Um, <laughs> hi, how are we doing, guys? It's been a while. Not really for the fans because <laughs> these come out every week now. But it's, yeah, it's good to be back. Well, it apparently, is good to be every back. week. Shh. Oh. We're on a hiatus, it's fine. So, uh, so it's fine. Note, we, had a, we had a winter vacation. The, this the was, date today. Which lasted this was recorded on March. the 7th of March, 2018. Just so you know. <laughs> and you would be hearing this At on Dave the Radio Station in 2026. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> and in front of me today, it's Dan. It's Dan the man. It's Dan the man with a plan. Dan Cameron, how are you? I'm back in black, but I'm wearing Sam Pink. No, he's not. He's wearing a wrestling shirt. That'd be really cool if you were, though. Yeah. Salmon pink would work on you. Well, it could be Squidward. Got, well, oh, being Patrick in a relationship, there's only a matter of time before she buys me a salmon pink shirt. Salmon. You look nice in it, love. Put it on, you look nice. You don't have to rub it in, you don't have to rub it in Dan. You're the only, not, you're no, the only. No, because that, that's when I know when I'm trapped. <laughs> when they buy you salmon pink clothing. Speaking Put it of people, on, it looks nice. Speaking to people who aren't single, Paul. <laughs> Aha! 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 I've missed that voice. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, Paul? Um, yeah, I'm okay. Good, good. I've been better. Fair shit, enough. Shit week, but there you go. Yeah. Mm. Let's uh, go on to the catch up. Shit life. You know what they say about um, we can, Clint do Eastwood? Have, do we have a transition between this and this? No. no? Yes, you know, you, know, yeah, you, know, yeah, you know what they say about Clint Eastwood and anal sex? What? One makes your day and the other makes your whole week. Catch up, Sesh. Woo! Jason, go first. Hey, uh, <laughs> go first, Jason. Well, it wasn't all that eventful. I've started streaming again, like fully. Yeah, did in you, the did in. I heard a map phoned you up and said you suck. It was pretty good, actually. Yeah, that that <laughs> happened. I rang up and I was like, "Oh, we've got a caller on the show. Hey, what do you want to say?" And he goes, "You suck." And then hangs up. And they called me up again later to insult me again. That's ridiculous. And then I put my phone on silent so he couldn't do it anymore. Good. <laughs> Matt Frock. You get ringing and then putting the phone down as Jason answered it. Yeah, so I put him on silent. Um, so that was fun. That that was a good fun thing. Uh, I mean, generally, it's been nothing else. Uh, my job search has been... Perilous. Perilous and a failure. More like a journey to Mordor. Well, it's more like a journey to Mordor where they stop you at every turn and say, no, check online first. <laughs> or gen- and then <laughs> they never get back to you. <laughs> So you 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 just have oh, to sit I'm, at home. I'm afraid if you have to destroy the ring, you got to do it online, my lover. <laughs> www.destroythetheringorg Don't go on that website. Forward slash, forward slash jobs. Forward slash jobs. Forward slash, slash careers. 
Do you want to be Sauron's ass wiper? Do you want to have a Sauron? What about you, Dan? In the time you've been away, how's your time I'd, been? I'd rather have a hard on than a Sauron. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? How's your time been while you've been away from the podcast? Pretty good. I'm I'm now on the property ladder. Ooh. He's now an official pet owner. I'm an official pet owner, yeah. Tell us about that. I'm now a dad to a Staffordshire this? terrier named Stella. That's cool, man. And she's beautiful. Well, what about this it. property? What's what's going on with that? I live in Cronin now. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. I'm very sorry. With my lady love. I just see Brandon now winking at me, like nodding his head in agreement. <laughs> you he's mean Jim's looking, he's looking down from you in the sky. Lady love. And it's not Because Brandon it's died. Love. <laughs> Brandon is dead now. He, he, he rose up like a phoenix, though. <laughs> Part of them did. <laughs> like a fetus. Like a river phoenix. Like a fetus on fire. Yeah. But yeah, I'm doing fetus. all right. Good. Can't complain. Apart from Arsenal shit. Yeah. Then go out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing pretty okay, I guess. That's good. Not amazingly, but you know. You're not going somewhere anymore, are you? Yeah, um, we'll talk about that later in the podcast, yeah. but yeah. Are you going to say how much cunts they are? I'll explain okay. later. Uh, and my nan's not very well, but other than that, um, yeah, I'm okay. Can't complain. What's, n- what's your nan's name? Sue. Sue, if you're listening to this, she we love be. you. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. She'd call you gay for saying that. Stay strong. <laughs> she would actually call you a homosexual if you said that to her. And if she did that, I'd sleep with her. She's she's a lad. She's a lad. She is she's a one. right lad. Is she, is she like the nan from uh, Catherine Tate? Fucking liberty. Well, the way my dad said that she was recovering slightly was by saying, yeah, she's up in swearing. Yeah, so sort of Catherine Tate, old lady. And Paul, how are you doing? Um, I've been better. I've had a difficult week. Mm-hmm. And uh, I miss Dan. Good to have Dan back. Yeah. Well, hey. Black, ah. and, black and better and The band's back together. Back. He doesn't He doesn't feel right without Dan here. Well, I did say the tripod is a bit unstable without a leg missing. It don't feel right not having the podcast on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, I've man. missed this. But yeah, other than that, I'm being optimistic. So, yay! Yay! You should have seen the look on his face when he said that. He looked dead inside. <laughs> the world's a, falling apart. <laughs> life is a bag of baby dicks, but hey! Yeah. Ha-ha! Well, that's a great um, track title for a heavy metal band. Bag of baby dicks. No, bag no. Of baby, dicks. baby dicks. Yeah, burning fetus. <laughs> burning fetus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like a metal band. Just get some like, twigs, throw them on the ground, take a picture, and that's your logo. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I um was it uh last night uh I I just got this video recommended to me and I watched it uh and it was a music video for a band called Moby um yeah. and they they they've got this new album called More Songs for the Apocalypse mm-hmm. uh but they did this music video and it's just this guy sitting in front of a TV watching it mm-hmm. uh and it's like old 40s cartoons you know uh, right. animals being like really happy and shit mm-hmm. they the care bears and the Care Bears start segregating the other Care Bears. They're like blues and orange out and they build a wall and like push them away. Did one of them have dodgy looking hair? Uh, they didn't. Was but there, Donald. Was, there was a Donald Trump Transformer. Was there? Sick. Yeah, there was a Donald Trump Transformer. Did he, did he, did he transform into a big pile of shit? Uh, he transformed into a dollar sign, but just before, and I noticed this, which means it was definitely intentional... The way he transformed made it look like he also turned into a swastika. <laughs> so, so I, I feel like there's some uh, symbolism at play. I there. saw a uh, music video today as well. It was a uh, it was a music video of people being tortured to death. That's pretty cool, man. Wasn't yeah. the new Ramstein video? Was it? No, but it ended with someone getting uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's, it's the form of torture where they pull your lungs out through your, your back. Drawn and quartered? No, no. Where they pull your lungs out through your back and make them look like you're an lungs angel. Through your back. Was oh. it the new mm. song by but Basically, you suffocate to death. No. Harvey Ramstein. Harvey Ramstein. I, I forgot to mention Chicago. there was a bit as well in that music video where um they they push this fat capitalist off a hill. He's on like a uh, like a bed of money and he just they just push him off. Uh and then uh He Man and his people use their powers to banish Theresa May, Rupert Murdoch and Kim Jong un into a into the Shadow Realm. Nice. It's pretty great. Love you, Gio. Who's Rupert Murdoch? He's the guy Rupert who owns Murdoch. like all the newspapers. Oh yeah, that dickhead. Mm-hmm. The guy who interferes in all of our politics here in the yeah. UK. Did they banish uh, Ronnie Pickering Chuck as well? Jeremy sure. in the Corbyn. There was someone else, but I can't. I I 
couldn't tell you who he is. Do you know how they I say think it's Steve Bannon? Actually, do you know how they say Ronnie Pickering in Korea? Go on, Lonnie Pickering. <laughs> I can detect a whole lot of ooze in this episode. Okay, before this gets any more racist, let's let's press on. Oh, those damn black people. <laughs> Just end on that, please. Shot by Jason. <laughs> hey, Jason, what's next on the docket? It is time for... What's next on the docket today? Tripod at the movies. Oh. Ew. With your host, Jason Gould. Ew. It's a double feature. It is actually a double feature. A triple feature, then. Yeah, cool. All right. <laughs> So, uh, well, and and have you got a film as well? Yeah. yeah. With your hosts, Jason Gould and Dan Cameron. Ew. Right. So, uh, so get the pop cop porn out, so boys. First of cop all, porn. funny, funny you should mention cop. Uh, I am here to tell you about the greatest film to grace mankind, uh, otherwise known as Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, the sequel to that as well. They did. They did. You watched both uh, of them. Yeah. So, so it's known as a meme movie, and it's known to be not very good. I'm here to tell you that it's not as bad as Rotten Tomatoes says it is. It gets a 33 percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Right. Which makes me think, holy fuck, this is going to be unbearable to watch and just not very good. Um, I could get through that film. About half of it was pretty funny and well well written uh there were some cringe worthy scenes very cringe worthy scenes stop um but like the film itself entertaining basically it's die hard in a shopping center but with a fat guy but with a fat guy uh, uh on a said sorry for the way isn't it? yeah on a on a segue uh but he, he's got his moves on his segue you know? yeah. Well. yeah yeah he uh uh, these these criminals they take over the the shopping center, but Paul Blart doesn't uh, notice because he's too busy playing Guitar Hero and shredding it up. Uh, and there are people behind him. They're like banging on the doors. They're like Blart, come! There are people, and he's like, you know. So uh, there are bad guys here, naughty. Yeah, uh, it's it's a bit it's a bit questionable. Um, the bad guys they've all got like tattoos on. They've got like these numbers, uh, hard light. Written into their onto their arms and everything, and they use skateboards yeah, and, use and skateboards. bikes to go around the place, and they're like parkour runners and shit. Oh, Paul's putting his heater on. Meanwhile, meanwhile, like uh, they've also got guns, right? So imagine this scene: Paul Blart's like, "Hey, you come and get me, right?" They've all got guns. They don't use the guns. They all just get on their bikes and just, you know, bike down the stairs. Someone parkours. They want to look down, cool, okay? But Jason, everything. it's a family film. Poor boy, it's no family film. To make it R-rated, they need to be holding Kinder Eggs in their hands. <laughs> uh, so there was that. Uh, and Band then, in America, people. And then there's Paul Blart 2, which is... Uh, this time it's personal. Well, this time... It's the exact same film as Paul Blart 1, except now it's set well, in it's a hotel. Was it still called Paul Blart, Paul Blart Mall Cup 2? Yeah. It's, it's not a mall. Adam Sandler in it? I mean, there is a mall in the hotel. <laughs> so, technically. And and he's he's at a hotel... No, he's, he's at a convention for other mall cops. It's like a mall cop expo. And they're all talking about their amazing mall cop stuff. He gets a team of other mall cops together. <laughs> And they all fight, you know, they all fight this this new bad guy who's basically the exact same as the first bad guy, except he's got different coloured eyes and he's allergic to, uh, I think, like, oats Decent or something. Lines. The only scene I remember in Paul Blart is the one where he has, like, a diabetic episode and eats a really dirty lollipop and then fall from the, on the floor. That was a bit like that in the second one. Oh, well. I see they did their research then. People have a diabetic attack, just eat dirty sweets off the floor. <laughs> the look Great dang game. research there um, it was yeah it was like there was this bit in the first one where uh, the, the main villain was like poor Blart he's harmless he's fucking useless he can't do anything right about 10 minutes ago he'd just blown up half the supermarket yeah he's harmless he can't do anything he just blew up half the supermarket but you know nothing to worry about uh He's a bussy old. The point I'm trying to say is, right, the first one, the first one was watchable. It had some funny moments. It was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. I knew it was pretty cheesy as well, but I did enjoy it. 
Uh, and the second one's basically the same as the first, only there's a few changes. There's more mall cops. There's yeah, yeah. It's it's like twice well, it's the one of the cop. mall cops. Adam Sandler. No, actually, I don't think he's in the movie. What he about Rob it. Schneider? He's also not in it. He's also Seth not in it. Rob Schneider. Nah, he's not in it either. He's uh, a character. But what what I want to point out is right. Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, same film as Paul Blart Mall Cop One. Mall Cop One got thirty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Two got five percent. They're the same film. <laughs> Maybe that's why it got five percent though. Yeah. Yeah, right, but it's not that bad. Like, when I when I see 5% on Rotten Tomatoes, right, that makes me think this film is completely incompetently shot. But w- w- think about it, when, when it comes that, to... when it comes like to when it comes to Yeah, when... when, when that's critics' review, yeah. When it comes to critics, they, they, tend to, they tend to base it off what the first one was like, because if they're exactly the same, they're just going to rate it worse. <sighs> well, I think they shouldn't. I think they stupid. should rate it based these, on... Like, these critics would give a film, a Danish is. noir film about a rocking chair, two hours of just a rocking chair going, hundred percent, and say it's Oscar worthy. <laughs> Danish film about a rocking. Just a can black we do and that? white film of like a rocking chair. Going, can, we, can we do that? Can yeah. we do that? Two like hours. A Danish film directed by Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> oh hi, Mark. Tommy, Tommy Wiseau's in a new film. I want to see that film. No, 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 not not Best Friends, a different one. He's not playing Joker, is he? No, he's playing a bounty hunter. Has anyone he's s- playing a bounty hunter. <laughs> Has anyone seen the film called 24 Hours? No. 24 um, Hours. It's a film oh, of, oh no, that's 48 of an office block, or a housing block, tower block. Oh, no, I do know it's that It's 24 film. Hours yeah, long. It was made by... Um, and the only thing that happens in it is the lights go on and off occasionally yeah, it, at um, night. It was made by... It was made by that, what, what the what's his name? Uh, that really yeah, quite famous, famous Yeah, really famous. Director. David Lynch. No, um, it was an old film. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey uh, Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be a completely different 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, Paul. But no, it was just a weird concept to have a 24-hour yeah. long film. It was 24 hours long. I think the Serbian film was a weird there concept. There was no camera. There was one camera shot. It's and not it's not just the lights. So we're going to talk about Serbian films. different apartments. Yeah, just for um, 24 hours. Yeah. So, so there was that. Uh, then after that, we watched uh, the Captain Underpants movie, and that was fucking great. Cool. Really well adapted. Uh, brilliantly animated. No spoileriness. Thank you. Uh, I loved it, and d- that that's that's it. That, that's my opinion. Dan. So Paul Blart two, not as bad as they say. Captain uh, Underpants. Yeah, Captain yes. Underpants. It's a children's book series. It was a series of, of books. Oh. Yeah. Captain Underpants. Yeah. Right. So there's like these two kids. Does he have? A, does he have a villain called Senior Wifrons? <laughs> <laughs> no. Seriously, right? They're, it's it's some fucking crazy shit. So. Uh, it's these, these two, two kids. kids. They're they're little shits, and their principal is like, rah, rah, "I'm gonna separate you." So he, he uh, one of the guys has this ring, which is like a hypno ring, and he got it out of a cereal box, and he uses it on them. He's like, you know, stay away or I'll hypnotize you, and it actually ends up hypnotizing him. So they're like, "Okay, uh, we're gonna, you know, uh, we're gonna turn you into a chicken," and he turns into a chicken. So like, oh shit, oh shit, let's turn him into Captain Underpants. Which is like their comic book they wrote yeah, because yeah. they're kids and they're oh, stupid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then he believes he's Captain Underpants. Uh, and then while that's going on, a new teacher appears at the school uh, whose name is Professor Poopy Pants. Do they, do they have a Japanese assassin called uh, Lady Fong? No. <laughs> um, so, so Professor Poopy Pants is there and he's like, uh, he, he hates laughter because, of course, everyone laughs at his name. He was once in the running for the Nobel Peace Prize because he created a gun that shrinks things and enlarges things. But he then refused the prize because when they read out his name, everyone laughed at him. So he was like, I don't want that. So he became a, a villain. Maybe, nice. maybe we could use that for Jimmy. <laughs> maybe we should move on to Dan's film. Yeah. Yeah, so since, like, being spoken for, I now go to the cinema to watch what you guys would probably say is gay films. Gay films. And I went to see it's my the latest film. Hugh Jackman film, The Greatest Showman. Yay! Oh. And I'll be honest with you, I think that musicals are very Barbra Streisand, and oh, I avoid musicals. them. Yeah. But this one was actually really good. Hmm. You can't say anything, you're starring in a musical. Mm. That's mean Fagan. I have to like him. Fagan. Ooh, Fagan. Ooh. Fagan. You like Sykes. musicals, don't you? Um, good film. Uh, I thought Hugh Jackman had an excellent voice. Never heard him sing before. Huge Jackman. Uh, he was said. He I mean, saying in an interview that he prefers musicals to like. Well, he films. he started off he's in really Broadway. Good. Yeah, he's really good. He he started off in Broadway. That that's where he began his acting career. I forgot how good Zac Efron is at singing as well. Because he, he was, was in high school, high school musical. musical yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, where is Paul all, going? All in all, it was an enjoyable film. Two hours of entertainment. First time I've left the cinema actually feeling quite happy. Yeah, yeah. quite jolly, springing my step. What about what about when we watched Kingsman? No, I just wanted to kill stuff. Because Kingsman's an action. Am I okay film with still? Violence, isn't it? Now, Thank you. now, real quick, I, choreography was people. Was brilliant. People have said right that Kingsman Two is crap. It's not, and that that studio interference ruined it. They're wrong. The only thing that that was bad about the film. The only thing that was weaker was, was the villain. The villain was weaker than the last film. Yeah, not even mm. that much weaker, just a bit weaker. Yeah. But how but, do you follow from Sam Jackson? But Elton John was just like Elton Morgan John Freeman. Yeah. That's how you follow him from Samuel Jackson. Morgan Freeman. The film was great. People oh, are complaining no, because it wasn't exactly what they thought it would be. Or you could have Gordon Ramsay. Like the Americans weren't... I told you to fucking fill it, that fucking fish! Like the um, Americans you? weren't overshining An idiot anything. sandwich. It was, it was just a good film. Yeah, mm. it was a good film. Anyway, that's that's that. So that was tripod at the moon. I'll give the film a seven point nine out of ten. Yeah, we should we should it. rate these, shouldn't we? So uh, that's enjoyed, a seven point nine out of ten. I rate Paul Blart two five percent. I rate Paul Blart uh, one and two because they're the same movie. Um, a seeing double uh, out of ten. A seeing double out of ten. What does that mean? So that'd be two. I'm not sure, actually. Seeing double out of ten. Uh, and I'd give Captain Underpants a fresh pair out of the right out of the washing machine. The only time that would get nice. a high score is if it did have someone called Senior Wife Friends. Let's move on. <laughs> right, guys, we have You love it. We have some important news here. Important announcement. Is it the um, news or is it? Have you found news? out how much no, no, wood could a wood chuck chuck news. wood chuck could chuck wood? A lot. Uh, I've been contacted by a local MP, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, about about a very important thing. So, as okay. you know, uh, recently the UK was hit by a big storm. Yes, it was very called snowy. the beast from the east. Yes, and apparently uh, the pest from the west. No, no, the pest from the west has yet the to visit from the, the UK. Mars Weinstein, wasn't it? No, it's it's Trump. He's he, he's not. Oh yeah, the pest from the west. Yeah, Please he's... let me in. No, <laughs> not from the north. Not from, from the north. north. That'd and be the slut from that'd the south. be Nicholas Sturgeon. <laughs> Not from the north. And the slut from the south. Angela oh. Merkel. Hello, yeah. my name is Angela Merkel. Hello. <laughs> Isn't she west of us though? Meghan Markle. <laughs> East. Okay. Side. Anyway, um, the the MP has contacted us and they've said, uh, yeah. Uh, so we've had a lot of trouble with snow recently. Uh, we we need to find not uh, John Snow because he knows nothing. We need to find some ways to uh, to deal with all of this snow. Five on Peterborough. In. So uh, so it, the MP has enlisted us personally, right? Uh, to uh, to deal with the beast from the What's east. What's our budget? What's our budget? Unlimited. Okay. Theoretical theoretical ideas here. Okay. Napalm. Right. Stick with me. Right. Okay. We we get a fleet of jets. Right. Mm -hmm. We bribe the UN to make napalm legal. We move everyone to, uh, let's say, Wisbeach for like a week, mm -hmm. and then we napalm Peterborough. <laughs> what about if uh, Peterborough's uh, no, Peter Peter already no, been napalmed? Then it would kill all the homeless people. <laughs> right. And okay. the snow would be gone. Dude, some of them are ex-servicemen and seamen. And speaking of semen, <laughs> like that gives my idea right. So, uh, so clearly Peterborough has an image problem, right? Yeah, it's Peterborough. Yeah, yeah it's Peterborough, right? Fucking so we need to change our image vastly. And what better way to do it, you know? Because uh, Peterborough, it's, it's seen as a quite a secluded, a closed-minded place. I say, it's right? Because Dan lives there. I say. We we go for two things at once, right? So so we true. we get Peterborough a new title and we get rid of the snow. Uh, I say no, we don't get rid of John Snow. Is the I best say character. we invite all of the men, all of the gay men in the country to Peterborough, right? <laughs> right. Then get them to have one giant orgy, right? And the the heat from the orgy will dispel all of the snow. And then at the same time, we will also be awarded collectively as a town, Peterborough. The, the town that had the world's biggest gay orgy. 
Or alternatively, I could just fuck my way t- t- to, to the safety of this good city. The perfect plan. City. I think we should get Paul out there with a big amp and just shred the snow away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. Talking of snow, I think of I snow. think women have got a lot to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. They are as cold as ice. <laughs> no, for example, like, this You're woman, as right? Cold as ice. <laughs> this woman on the radio, they, uh, this woman, they've been trapped, a load of people have been trapped for about. 10 hours or something yeah, yeah, yeah. overnight all the rest of it and they were interviewing some people and they said oh I'm glad we had some you know I had blankets blah 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 blah. kept myself warm anyway they got to this woman and they said um, and how have you been coping and you know they said well it's been it's been terrible terrible really bad uh, I've been freezing cold we haven't had any food or water there's no one coming to to help us or anything we've just been left here Said, and they knew about this for, for days and days and days. They should have been out here and cleared all this before this happened. I think it's an absolute disgrace. <laughs> I thought, you stupid bitch. <laughs> she was blaming the authorities for not having keeping the roads clear mm. for her to drive to wherever she was driving to see a friend, apparently. <laughs> she didn't think, like, yeah, you have known about this for days and days and days, so why the fuck did you not get in your car? Get trapped in the snow to go and see a friend. <laughs> she could have bought some fucking grit. Ah, I'm having a problem with lady drivers at the moment. <laughs> I, think everyone, uh, I think everyone's having a problem serious. with lady drivers. How, <laughs> how soon do we stop this sexist tirade? No, I, I'm not being sexist. No, Jeff will listen to it and go, I'm this is not the best being, podcast ever. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. I, oh, we've got to blank that name now. <laughs> Why? Jeff. Oh, We're not like, he's not allowed to mention. My name's Jeff. You're not allowed to mention his com- <laughs> company works for him to get fired. My name Jeff. Well, there's oh. no, I know loads of Jeffs. Yeah, same. <laughs> but now I've met said about the company. We know who he's talking about. We didn't oh, say the company. God. I said that, I said it's for his company though. Yeah, but we didn't say who. who <laughs> we got to cut this whole bit out. Was. It's fine. It's fine. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Right. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um, My name Jeff. <laughs> fuck's sake, Dan. <laughs> if we got uh, a break after this, please. Right. Um, <laughs> dude, I don't care. I'll knock him the fuck out. What I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> so. No, I've forgotten it now. That, Fuck it, next segment. We were talking about getting rid of all the snow. No, no, we haven't, we haven't heard from Dan uh, what his plan is to dispel all the snow. Mm. To dispel all the snow that is now not here. Yeah. Well, right, just so... Let, just so let Mother Nature take its fucking course. Dan, 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 imagine, if you will, for a moment, a in. scenario where we're snowed in. What would you do to get rid of the snow? I would travel on foot to New York and save Jake Gyllenhaal from the library. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dennis Quaid, that shit. I remember what I was going to say now. Go. Did you see... Right, you, you showed me, but did you see that post on Facebook? That guy who, uh, like, uh, he couldn't get out of his house. He was snowed in, and someone was laughing at him for it. So the next day, he gets into, like, a giant lorry... Shovels a whole load of snow just from everywhere and like dumps it. Of snow. Yeah, and just dumps it right in front of the person's house so they can't get out. What? Yeah, right, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that it. That's it. They can't get out now. They're stuck. Because <laughs> a whole load of snow's been dumped. He didn't in front put it in front of the front door. He put it in front of the gate. Can I, can I just take this moment to say, Wenger out. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I, right. think, I, I think the snow would stop. I, I think the I'll snow would stop that. if Wenger was out. Yeah, I think you're right. That's why. That's why that, it is. Yep, that's it. That's the perfect saw, thing. I saw a lot of, of, saw a lot of snow, pictures I, on Facebook of um, outside Arsenal Stadium, the speed camera with a bump, and it says, "When you're desperate for three points." <laughs> 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 that's, that is good. That is that is good. <laughs> I'm laughing because yes. I don't know what the joke is. That's funny. That is funny. No, I was t- talking of snow. I heard, I heard the best quote I've ever heard in my entire life. Go for it. Uh, the Great Fire of London. When it started, it was reported to the, the mayor of London. What should we do? There's a fire. What should we do? And he turned around and said, Oh, don't worry. I'm going to bed. A woman could piss it out. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought, he said about the fire of London, a woman could piss it, piss it out. And then the next day, it's just a raging, you know, Oh, it, remi- it reminds me of it reminds me of this one American thing I saw. It was like snowing really heavily in one part of America, and they asked this guy and goes, "Well, you know, snow's kind of like Justin Bieber. You know, it's really you know it's really cute and nice when it first arrived, but now it's like just obnoxious and annoying to really go back to Canada." Covered <laughs> in shit tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's end that segment here. Snow. A woman. Could the snow's been really it bad, actually. I did go sledging. 
I, I went didn't. sledging for the first time in many years. I um, yeah. I, I, I built a sledge 29 you know, years ago. I've used it twice because nice. we haven't had any snow. This is the first time I used it. It <laughs> was so it, it was so popular. <laughs> I had queues of people wanting to go on it, <laughs> including all the adults. You know, you know when all the, the adults went on it as well. I did, yeah. I did the you know the first night adult it... thing. I sat by the window, pissing and moaning, going, "I hope that don't fucking freeze." <laughs> you know, you know the first um, night it settled. Yeah, I went outside at like midnight or one in the morning because I was upset, and went and made some snow angels, threw like snowballs at cars, wiped right. snow off windscreens, and then drew a giant dick on the floor by right. walking it. <laughs> <laughs> in my back garden my back garden's massive so I just drew a massive penis you should have sculptured one I saw a cock and, <laughs> I saw a cock and balls on I this, was tempted to on this village common it. it was brilliant it was about eight foot <laughs> cock cock and, and balls two, yeah, on this cock village and balls and cock standing out with two balls it was fantastic whoever did it it was all carved you know all the the head and everything the foreskin they had that whole thing all really nicely carved swiftly really moving on carved. please go do, do the swish yeah. noise do the swish noise that's what I was going to ask you <laughs> do the swish noise when's the actually festival on this year uh, there's a question mark we're not yeah. sure oh. Apparent, apparently so I've heard it's pretty good it's brilliant yeah. but, but the police the trouble with it the police won't allow it to go ahead unless it's policed ah. right but then the police the bill for the police is so high. It's more the bill for the police is more than all the other stuff what? added together. Wait, but why? Why does we, the, we why just do get the police sting charge and and his band that? to the, to the to police charge? Off. We'll charge. Yeah, the police will why? charge the, the council for for policing it because they're basically acting like security fucking, guards. It's their fucking job. No, because they're acting like security guards. They're not acting like. So what they did last time is they said, okay, we'll reduce the amount of police so long as you get security in and have you know proper fencing and all the rest of it, which they yeah. did. But there was problems outside because of the festival, you know, down the street and over yeah. the other parks. So they've said, we're not sure we can allow it to go ahead. Like Willow Fest. Fest. Yeah. 28,000 people went last time. Fuck off. Let, let, them, let them do it. Well, it's should. a good way to bring, like, a tourism community together. Yeah. Tourism, I mean, bring your community how many, together. 28,000 people, and I think they arrested four. Bringing people together, like the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> End with that. Oh, hang on, no, you can't. I saw um, Lee Nelson. He's not. A, I'm not a massive fan of Lee Nelson. Oh no, no. Probably. I know the name Lee Nelson. I don't yeah, know uh, but Lee Nelson's well good show. Yeah, he was on. Um, yeah. He was on the Palladium. Um, right. There was a, a a new comedian on. He was brilliant actually. His new comedian. He was saying things like, uh, "When when ladies going out for the night, they all you know, ring each other up and they come round. You know, and they're all in their dressing gowns and yeah, doing yeah. their makeup and chatting, and have a bit of Lambrini and all that." And he goes. You never hear blokes doing that, do you? No. A bloke, if they're going out to the pub, they don't ring each other up and go, do you want to come round? You know, I'll put some candles on and, and uh, we'll chat a while, have a little bit of wine and then we can get undressed in front of each other. <laughs> <laughs> you never hear that. Anyway. Should we do that next week, guys? <laughs> get dressed for it. Hell yeah. But, uh, Lee Nelson. <laughs> Lee Nelson was coming on. He goes, um, he goes, society's not what it used to be. There used to be class. You know, you used to know where you stood. You had upper class, middle class, working class. That was it. But nowadays, it, it's, it's, there's just a multiple of classes. You've got your upper or higher class still there. You've got your, your, <coughs> your uh, middle class. Then you've got your lower middle class. Then you've got your lower, lower middle class. Then you've got your low class. Then, then you've, you've got, got your Goodell. lower, lower, lower class. Then you've got your lower, lower, lower class. And then underneath that, the lower, lower, lower class. And underneath that... The people who shop at Iceland. All the guests on Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> 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 Which I thought was brilliant. Was 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 Lee Nelson that guy who, like, walks behind... It was either Kanye West or Eminem doing a, like, doing a concert and he, like, he did some funny shit behind him or something. I don't know. It was some comedian. He interrupted one of one yeah, of their concerts yeah. and, like, did a little dance behind I them. I don't think it was Lee Nelson. Making fun of them. But I know, who, I know you what you mean. Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. Alright, on that, that is the end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, Jason, say something funny. I'm up. Swans are cunts. <laughs> Swans that are was... the worst fucking things on the planet. That was quite abrupt there, Ash. No, but they are, right? Like, look, okay. What, what is your opinion on swans, Jason? So I don't have an opinion on swans. No, They're everyone birds. has an opinion on swans. What's your opinion on swans? They're birds that are in the water. Paul? I don't pay much attention to them. Um. Well, they're the large, one of the largest flying birds, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I don't know. They taste good. <laughs> um, think of this. Swans, they're, 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 they're white. First of all, they're white. Yes. So if they get any mud on them, they're going to be covered in mud and it's not really going to ever come off properly. Yes. Yeah. You can't eat them, really. 
they not allowed to? Exactly, no. not allowed to eat them. They just, uh, why they, are you not allowed to, to eat them? Because the queen owns them all. Because she's a cunt. Oh, she don't, no, she only uh, the queen only owes owns one species, doesn't she? I think it's the Buick swans. But she still owns swans. And that's yeah, what matters. Yeah. And okay, well, they 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 just they, they 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 if you walk up to them, they'll break your fucking arm without a quest second a second yeah. fucking doubt. They'll just walk up to you and fucking snap your arm because they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they think they're so important. They're just. Disgusting, ugly birds. They do look quite beautiful, though. No, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> there was a, there was I like a, how uh, you timed that so that you said that just like literally after Ash just said they're disgusting, <laughs> ugly things. <laughs> I think they're quite beautiful. But uh, there was a guy, actually, funny enough, a few years ago who uh, he built. Suddenly, he had a, uh, a oh massive. God, we started again. He had a massive pond appeared in his garden. And uh, I don't know how it came about, but somebody discovered a bit of a swan sticking out the ground. Oh. And uh, when the authorities checked it, they dug up this big pile of earth that he'd made this sort of pond from. And it was to cover all the uh, swans he'd been killing. <laughs> They'd kept coming in and he, he had a problem with his swans, so he just kept killing them and burying them <laughs> in this. There was about 20, 30 swans. Oh, killed. my God. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. a fucking national yeah. hero. Yeah. No, you got prosecuted. Very proper. much a national yeah. hero. Seriously, like, swans are just fucking useless. They don't look yeah. that nice. They take up loads of space. They're fucking everywhere. They'll break your arm if you look at them funny. They sound bad. Saying that, though... And you swans, can't eat them. Swans are cunty, but the geese are like the cunts of the swan family. True. However, they're, they're, swans they're are like, still like shit. fake swans. Are, they're, they're just, uh, uh, swans are I worse. Think geese uh, are animals that want to be swans. Yeah. Yeah. They want to have the yeah. power. But, Anything that yeah. aspires to be a swan, I want dead. They're like they're like weeaboos. They they but they want to be, want to be cool, Japanese. but they sound like. <laughs> They sound like that. Remember so they fucking. Just can't. That was pretty good. Remember, remember it again. <laughs> remember uh, the black swan, the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's bad because it's got about swans. <laughs> swan Lake, fuck off. Have you seen the so, film? Because there's a bit where uh, Mila Kunis is eating out Natalie Portman. That is true. That is that's true. what that bloke's pond got called, I think. Swan Lake. <laughs> swan, <laughs> swan Lake. Swan Lake's a good song, <laughs> but swans themselves are bad. Mm. Yeah. So, so let me. They let prance me around ask, thinking that um, they're beautiful, and it's like, no, you're not. Ash, when did this hatred of swans start? I've always had a hatred for swans. No, but like, when he got it, chased it has by, to have been triggered by something. So it actually wasn't. Uh, I don't think it was. I, 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 I think it was when I, I could buy him a swan lighter. <laughs> if I recall correctly, I remember I was trying to feed bread to the ducks, and a swan came over and just broke the duck's neck and ate his bread. And since then, I've just not liked swans. Yeah, I mean that's that 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 is an experience that I imagine could be like. Yeah. Sorted I just realised, wow, swan sw- by psychiatry. I just no, because it's not like a, it's not like a thing that's a problem for me. It's right. just like I do like how I was like. Something must have happened. He goes, no, nothing happened. I, I don't think anything happened. No, no, it was this one time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the other time. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it was this one time. It just, just made me realise that <laughs> swans are just selfish cunts, really. So are cats. Uh, cats are the worst. Yeah. Oh, I hate cats. Cats are worse than swans. Cats. Oh. Jason's cat is okay. Oh, dude, dude, your cats are gangster. Yeah, your cats, cats are gangster as fuck. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> you, you're, you've, you've got the only good cats in the world. Yeah, Thank you man. have. I appreciate it. However, that. swans are shit. Yeah, I'm going to do a Dan's top ten next week of the ten cuntiest animals. If Swans, yeah, number, if Swans isn't number one, I'm be very angry at you. Them and cats would be up there. Yeah, but I've got to give reasons why. Fair enough. But no, the Swans are just okay. The point is, they're ugly. You can't even eat them, so they're useless. You know, they're they're the Queen owns them because she's a selfish bitch. spoiler. Spiders and snakes would be on there as well. You can say what you want about her, Ash. It's it's the thing is, but not trouser snakes. The reason yeah. the queen owns them is to protect them because they they are very tasty. Um, ah, like turtles. If, it, then why can't we eat them? Because so that, if we did, there'd be the none left. Merit. They'd be gone. Good. That's the one like merit. Dodos. Then. Good. Tastes but, real good. But <laughs> I want to try. Swan That's what meat. happened to the turtles from um, Galapagos. 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 Yeah. They all got eaten on the way home. Do you know? Home. Do you know? Oh, yeah. right, it, it, <laughs> it was. It was. A, it was <laughs> they I think got it was something like two hundred years until they were actually given a name, because <laughs> the specimens were getting eaten on the way yeah. to like the, like yeah. England. Where they never made examined. it back. Yeah. 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 Because they were really tasty. <laughs> oh my god! But seriously, love swans that. are just. <laughs> that, I, I can totally believe that though. See, it's it's true. It reminds me of what it sounds that, exactly like the sort of thing. That, that reminds me of when um, we must preserve right. li- wildlife, but it's so. Tasty. Do you know? Do you know what? That, it just, it just, so that situation just reminds me of when Australia went to war against emus and lost. <laughs> Speaking of turtles and tortoises, 
Um, uh, Bear Grylls did something really cunty. He actually cooked a t- tortoise in his own shell. Oh. <laughs> he buried it. <laughs> he took it out. And all you see is just a shell with like smoke coming out of it. And he goes, that looks done. He cracks the shell open. There he is eating tortoise. Oh. He's like, oh, it's just delicious. <laughs> I thought cooking him in his own shell. Anyway. That's like burning to death in your own house. Speaking <laughs> of... <laughs> What's going it's on? Horrible. Speaking of turtles, swans are just bad. Bear Grylls like, is a dickhead. It's worse than that, though. It's like... Bear it's, grills, isn't it, fam? It's like, it's like having a human in a suit of armor and then like just boiling the suit of armor with the person. It reminds still me in of it. the um. The Mad King did the, that to someone in Game of Thrones. You know the the the, the pig, the, the the bronze bull. What babes? Where you what, put something inside of it the, and put it over like fire until they burnt to death. Yeah, reminds me actually. They um. They thought it was inhumane, so they got the guy who made it to go inside of it to make test it. You couldn't open it from the inside, and then they just put him over fire and then threw him off a cliff. Pretty good. Do you know? Do you know what else would be on the top good. ten cuntiest animals? What? what? My left testicle. Why do you not like your left testicle? <laughs> Never have done, mate. Why? <laughs> Did it's it responsible. touch you? It's responsible for many uh, yeah. pregnancy scares. Yeah. I've had two just, pregnancy scares in my house. I don't like anything left. I, I'm, I haven't because I'm, stri- I'm a good Christian boy. I'm I'm strictly you don't like to the right. Condoms. <laughs> Who doesn't? Dan likes using condoms. I don't. See, Does see. Paul? All spunk bags. No, I don't like using spunk bags. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to, to end off this segment, I'd just like to say, if you ever see a swan, kick it. <laughs> spunk wallet. That's a great way, like a little segment that we've done there. It sort of petered off, derailed. Yeah. And then Ash desperately tried to bring it back at the end. Here we and are And we pushed now. it even further. Entertain into the us. Here we He's are using now. a two-inch brush to paint the fence. It'll take that cunt ages. <laughs> oh, here we go. Ash, oh. do you want to hear something amazing? Ash, yeah. Do you want to hear something amazing? Go for it. Oh, some fingers do, you want, do you want to hear? Do you want to hear a song by Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> okay. Produced by Childish Gambino. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fucking oh. love Childish Gambino. I've got time to make. Shout it, out so to Schoolboy Q. Ugly little motherfucker. <laughs> tire marks, tire marks, finish line with the tire marks. When the relay starts, I'm a runaway slave. Uh. <laughs> Walking on water and running on waves. Got him, see, I'm a god, you gotta see. There's never no eyes in me. I'm an odyssey, I'm a black away. Fire marshals moving in. Marshmallows inside my pen. Sweet 16s, got a sweet 16 any deadly other than saying I'm so appalled. Which part's not playing that now for a couple of reasons? So, oh, yeah. 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 That's really good though. I quite like So that. that's uh that, that's a pretty apt uh way to segue into Apparently he uh, has our marshmallows. Next, our next segment. What, was our our next that, segment? what the fuck is what marshmallows? What is our next segment? So uh I so must find out. What so do you mean I, marshmallows? He said marshmallows. I wonder what that's slang for. Probably actually literally what marshmallows. Testicles? I remember syrup sandwiches and large allowances. <laughs> So I heard this uh, this noise this morning. Jason's is. And it went along the lines of. Not like that. What? that, that <laughs> was the noise. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> He's gonna scream. Right. That is the noise of my mum sneezing. Fuck it now. Um, How is this related to music? <laughs> no, no, because he said you want to hear something. Oh, fuck. Right. That's a, that's a good segment. You just hit your head on the mic as well. <laughs> You're right. So uh, so so my question is, what is the weirdest noise you've ever heard someone make? Hey Ashley, what's the weirdest noise you've ever heard anyone make? Do you want to fucking kill yourself? Do you know? Yes, do you I know? Do. do you know the weirdest noise I've, I've, cunt. I've heard that anyone make? Go. <laughs> what about sneezes? You ever, have you ever heard really weird sneezes? My yeah. mate, when he sneezes, he sounds like Donald Duck. Alp takes a piss out of my sneeze. Yeah. Alp takes a piss out of my sneeze. Doesn't he? And I sneeze on Discord, he's like, oh, that's fucking retarded. Oh, okay. <laughs> my favourite thing is when we're, <laughs> when we're talking, we just randomly hear... <laughs> he fucking vapes on calls with us, and we, we just hear it. Rips a fat vape. Is he a serious rapist? Remember yesterday when I was uh, baiting some people? <laughs> it's great. He he like he started typing out some shit to like provoke someone. And then as soon as he sends it, he just like he just rips a vape. 
was brilliant. Do you know, I loved it. You know, in India, no, um, they can't pronounce their V's and R's. So vodka would be vodka and things like that. Isn't that Russian as well, though? It'd be quite, yeah, because I don't know what it is. It's something about the R's. Can you imagine if they, they would get quite confused in a minute when they're saying that someone's a serial vapist, but they're saying rapist instead? You're serial rapist. He's a serial rapist. True. I need to go and get some more fluid for raping. Yeah, <laughs> I need to get. To I actually do need to get some more uh, rape liquid. <laughs> In Russia, to be honest. I must get some more rape liquid. I actually ran out of. Rape. I actually actually ran out of rape liquid this morning. I must rape. I am entitled to my rape. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is right when I get the file for this I podcast, really like I'm gonna raping. cut out that single that single soundbite of Paul saying I need to get some more fluid for raping. I'm gonna use that as my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! That see, was what, what, what fluid? Do you, what fluid do you use? KY or? Uh... <laughs> Can you imagine if a Viking travelled it forward in time and ended up in Russia, and people were talking about raping, but they meant vaping, and the Viking was like, "This is legal now." <laughs> hell yeah! KY. Fuck yes! KY jelly. Yeah. Do you think royal jelly is what the Queen uses? What? what it, One uses royal jelly. No, if, you go, if, you go, no, if you go to a be- if you go to a bedroom, she's got um, she's got a. 55 gallon drum of lube. <laughs> and then, and you can actually buy a 55 gallon drum of lube online. Can you? Yes. Yeah. Look at it right I now. S- I <laughs> watched the stand up to cancer uh, oh, bake off yeah. last night. I I'll tell you what, I think Harry Hill's the most unfunny person ever. But is, on that particular he, show, he was hilarious. He was. I just don't find his humour funny I at all. Like but on that show, right, he was he, like. He, he's, an adult, he's an adult comedian who's been pushed into doing kids' comedy. But that's the issue. Last like some night, of his some last of th- night was really good. Yeah, he was good. Like yeah. some of the songs he's do- he did before he started doing TV burp or even after were really funny. Like uh, he did that song "I Want a Baby." I want a baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. Baby back ribs. I want a baby of my own. I want a baby. I want a baby. A baby and a mobile phone. Right. Sung by a teenage girl. Ah, that's, right. that's the joke of the song. And a council oh, house. Right. Yeah, and a council <laughs> house. <laughs> okay, no, no, that makes more sense. Um. Paul, have you ever heard any really weird sneezes? Yes, my sister. <laughs> my sister, she's. It's. I've never got used to it. I've known her for sixty years. Well, not no. I've, 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 <laughs> she's been alive that long. But yeah, she goes. I don't even know how I sneeze, but people make fun of it. it's really weird. Like. Jason, could you do a dramatization of my sneeze, please? Thank you. I can't even remember. You know, you know, Daniel Bryan. He can yeah. sneeze with his eyes open. Yeah. I've, I've got he a weird... dislodged one of his eyes, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I have a really yeah, weird... You sneeze with your eyes open, it's weird. I have a really weird condition, which I've been to the doctors about. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the opening to a joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, it, okay. when I get hungry, I can't stop sneezing. If I get hungry, I can sneeze 20, 30, 50 times. That's weird. Brand, until Brandon, I've eaten something. Brandon has something similar, where if he eats too much, his nose starts running, he starts sneezing. Yeah. This is weird. If I if I yeah. haven't if I haven't had breakfast by lunchtime, I'm sneezing. That's strange. That's odd. Wow. No one can explain it. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> no, it's like, but it's horrible like though, because you sneeze and then you wait for a thirty seconds and you can feel it building up and then another sneeze and it's like twenty or thirty mm. times. It's horrible. I like it really is horrible. You know, I really get hitting hiccups, but I get them super easily. So I I, I think I think my favourite sneeze I've ever heard. It was it was on this bloopers uh, show. Um, and uh, it was this newscast who was reading off the news. I think he was talking about global warming or something. She said something about climate change, and he just he's just like uh, the importance about climate change. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he looked as well. He sort of shaked. He goes, hey, it was brilliant. Are you sure, there wasn't some girl underneath the desk. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Speaking of like news reports and stuff, it reminds me of this. Uh, what was no, that no, news report? News report. It reminds me of this guy. Uh, it was an news American reports. news report. He was in a he was in a uh, school, and he kept talking about how fighting was prevalent in the school. And this guy kept walking behind him and making rude gestures, and he takes him to him the fuck off. The guy's like four times, and the guy's turns around and belts him around the face. <laughs> he goes, "Fucking idiot!" Oh, the irony. Yeah. I've got a joke. Is it a good joke? Yeah. Go on then. Man, man walks into the doctor's office with a steering yeah. wheel between his legs, and he goes, "Doctor, doctor, please help." Doctor goes, good God, man, how did that get there? The guy replies, I don't know, but it's driving me nuts. Yes. I thought there was going to be sneezing. a comment about driving by the seat of your pants. My, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call you Comedy Gould. I, I thought there was going to be a comment. My father-in-law 
when he sneezes. You fell into my trap. Yeah. When my father-in-law sneezes, he's a he's a Man City supporter. And when he sneezes, he goes Arsenal. He always does that. <laughs> Arsenal. Oh no. Sometimes if I'm gonna cough or sneeze, I like really build it up and then just say the word. I like. I'm cough. telling you, right? And then I cough like afterwards. <laughs> this could end up either we're gonna end up like Portsmouth in League Two. Yeah. Or we're going to get a new manager. Do you know what? Fuck everything up. This is game, not a football podcast, Ree! Really. That game last week, they reported 60,000 people there, and there wasn't. There yeah. was about 32,000. Yeah. They were including all the co- corporate wait, ticket sales. Wait, who did the reporting? <laughs> Sean Spicer? <laughs> Fucking. Okay, that, that, I think, I think, this, um, Pro I think this segment is thoroughly uh, de- derailed now. Let's leave it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Willies! <laughs> oh, Willies! Let's go. And leave it. Cunt stable. <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ashley, and as you as you may have known from previous podcasts, He's I w- a cunt. yeah, <laughs> as you may have known from previous podcasts, I was uh, supposed to be going to uh, Nepal or originally Nicaragua, but I got changed due to, to Nepal. budget restrictions. He's going to Lincoln Road. No, but um, due to their awful, awful mental health policy and checks, I'm no longer going because he's a raven lunatic. Um, Essentially, what's happened is I I, um, I, I have um, anxiety and depression, yeah. basically. And they would knew about this, and me going to hospital a couple of times last year. Uh, they'd known about this the entire time I'd been doing it, like since before I even went for my interview or, during my application. Honest, Very honest, because I knew off. if I wasn't honest, I'd get kicked off. And I was right about that, because one of my friends got kicked off for not telling them about his history of depression. Mm. Now... Um, I, they know about this the entire time, and I've been doing it since November, so about five, six months now. Um, I Yeah, so I've been doing it the whole time, and actually I couldn't get my documents in time for Nicaragua, and they really wanted me to go. I was told this by them when I was on a call, they really wanted me to go, so what they're going to do is they're going to defer me onto the Nepal trip, which was the final one they're doing. Mm. So I got deferred onto Nepal. I went for the entirety of that. Sorry, excuse me. And uh, went to another training event. Uh, raised a bunch of money. I ended up raising about five hundred and seventy-seven pounds altogether before my final big fundraising event, which was shaving all my hair off, including his pubes. No, my beard and my hair. <laughs> That'd be a fucking and, wild charity drive. Um, I get a call because I had I had a bit of a I was a bit upset on one of the days in the second training event. Yeah. So I went out to get some fresh air. I went to sit on the roof. That's where the smoking area was, and I sat a bit further up. And I didn't know you weren't supposed to be there. And she tells me, "Oh, you're not supposed to be here." She comes up and sees me and says, "Oh, you're not supposed to be here." So I come down and speak to the doctor and explain about everything or the nurse. I get a call a week later from her. And she's asking me like, "Oh, so what's your history of this kind of thing?" I was like, "It's all written down. It's all been told. I've spoken about it before." And she says, "Yeah, I want you to explain it again." And I was like, "Okay, fair enough." I explained it all, explained like whatever coping, coping mechanisms I had and whatever else. And then I get called another week later after planning my doctor's appointment, borrowing money from someone ready to pay £30 to get the doctor to sign a letter, um, getting my passport meeting sorted out. I got a call from them that evening telling me I'm, I've been taken off the project. Uh, so after all this time of working... And all the time telling me that they wanted me to go. Just now they're, trying, they're deciding I'm too much of a risk to go overseas. To That's, it is odd. You know they what that? Such a long time. You know what that tells it. me. What? Right. That tells me they didn't pay attention to what you'd actually given them. Mm. They didn't actually yeah. look into your mental health history beforehand. And when when they were given a reminder of that they were like oh shit maybe we've actually made a mistake but they didn't they didn't want to tell you well no that. that's not the that's not the thing that's not the thing because i've had they they they, they, they have a thing there called constant constant assessment so for the entire time you'd be assessed if you miss an email they get marked down for that mm. all that kind of shit and they constantly check your medical stuff and make sure you're okay and they ask you about it all the time. You know, you get emails about yeah. the yeah. nurse giving an email saying, oh, how are you doing today, blah, blah, blah. And just right at the end, they decide I'm too much of a risk to go. 
That is really poor. That is really poor. Because the other thing, that's that's not going to help your mental state. No, I, was, well, I, I, I made this point. Oh, no, my, yeah. my stepdad made this point to me. Said if you if you didn't have such a strong support network, if you didn't, yeah. if you were in a worse state, mental, state of mental health, you get told you can't do something because of your mental health. What are you going to do? Yeah, that could be the last straw for someone. They could actually kill themselves. And the other thing is, it would be good therapy for you to get out exactly into yeah. something like that no, and I don't, do I don't, something like that to I, help you. I do not want to call out the whole company for being a bad charity because they're not. They're a good charity. They do good things. Yeah, understandably, they've got yeah. to follow procedure. But, but they, yeah. they, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, it's things. just a, yeah. it's just a poor error of judgment on their case. Yeah, they should have let you down sooner. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like because I was supposed to be leaving at the end of April. Well, right. bearing in mind you also did that charity drive. Mm. I raised again. I raised five five hundred seventy five pounds, which is. Awesome, uh, and that was like about eight hundred. I was, going, I, it was looking like I was going to make eight hundred as well. Luckily, right. because it was a medical thing, they refunded all the money right. to everyone who donated. So they're they're going to do that, are they? They already have. Right. It's already happened. All the money has been re uh, redistributed to everyone, and uh, they've all got their own, uh, their donations back and stuff. Right. However, oh, but apart from oddly enough, one ten pound donation from a mum. Really? That's the only one that didn't get refunded. Strangely enough, it's ten pounds for you. Well, no, because I don't get to keep the money because it wasn't just giving, not a, oh, <laughs> not a GoFundMe. It didn't go into his bank account. That's a shame. Because um, if it did go into my bank account, I'd give it to my mum. That is pretty, it is pretty poor how they've dealt with you rather than... Yeah. yeah. I, I, compl- well, I, mean, I completely understand their worries. I completely understand yeah. what they're, where they're coming from. I just think they should have said it sooner or not said it at all because there wasn't, if there wasn't any worry before, why is there suddenly a worry now? Yeah. I mean, again, to me, this is, this is once again a repeated example of uh, the uh, the facilities that are supposed to control us and look after us, letting us down yeah. once again. Yeah. It kind of feels like almost like um, someone made a fuck up right at the beginning, and yeah. no one wanted to admit it until right at the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they should have assessed you as soon as you said about your mental health. Yeah, like straight yeah. from the start. Exactly. Yeah. And then they should, and then if they weren't happy, yeah. so, they so, 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 so say I went to my interview yeah. and they At least said, that way you'd yeah, no. right of it say I went like to my, the um, the say I went to my interview and I said, and I, I did say sorry that uh, oh I've got mental health, blah blah blah, and they go, okay, yeah, um, unfortunately because of all this these issues and how soon they were, you can no longer do this project. I'm like, I'd been like, oh okay, that's a bit a bit upsetting, but you know. Yeah, a bit of a shame. Or you whatever. know, it's fine. I got a free day out in London. Yeah. But instead, but you instead. get pissed about for like two months or so. You make five a, months, you mate. Make five real, months you make a real even. effort yeah. to raise the money, and yeah. then they turn around and say, fuck off. Adios, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. I, and and my, my big, my big, the big question I was leading on to was Has there anything, any, ever been anything like this in your sort of life that you've got an example of where it's been a big sort of situation and at the end you just kind of got screwed out of it? For no real reason. Well, you ought to ask the others first because I've got years and yeah. years of it. Honestly, if, I don't know. Interestingly enough, I'm currently putting something together for the government because I'm taking them to task about what's happened to me and my missus over the last yeah, well, yeah. 15, 16 years has been horrendous. But funnily enough, an MP stood up la- a couple of weeks ago in, in, in Parliament saying that he's heard reports of these assessments not going well. And he's suggesting now that all assessments for mental patients or anyone going through ESA and all that are now recorded because um, a main complaint which is what I've had is that they change once you've had your assessment they'll change things on the assessment forms and I've we've been in an assessment for like 10 minutes and they've made a massive they've made an assessment on your life in 10 minutes don't know you they're not qualified they're not qualified health professionals really they say they are they're not they're not really they're not they're not Um, and they ignore all the mental or all the health especially with my daughter every, all those specialists that have been working with my daughter they ignore all that and make their decision in 10 minutes mm-hmm. and then we get a letter saying this is your assessment you haven't you failed so we then have to appeal it um i got so pissed off i said right i now want these because the the, the date the, the information i was getting back from them wasn't what we were giving them in these assessments so i now ask for them to be recorded and these assessments are now an hour and a half long they're no longer ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're now very thorough. They're yeah. very they're recorded, and they can't change anything. I take away a recording of the assessment <laughs> when I leave. Yeah. Um, and you've got it there. And since then, I've not had any problems. Mm. Yeah. But I've actually got documents and um, recorded phone messages 
where they've actually lied or they've changed the doc. I've got a document in there that is a photocopy of a document from two years previously where they've just changed the date and the name on the front sheet. I think that's the, the, the biggest problem here. It's a system where if you want to get the thing done right, you have to put in all of the extra yes. effort yourself. Yes. Which I think they do on purpose so that less people are inclined to do it because then it's less hassle the for The trouble them. is all the able-bodied people that are switched on up there know how to cheat the system and they, they do persevere and pursue it because they know they're going to get it in the end. People who are mentally unable or don't have the support network yeah. don't and they drop it and they're yeah. the people that are suffering yeah and it's, it's, it's indicative of the system that we're running by at the moment i think the big one that i think for dan would be the whole time when they tried to take you to court over the esa yeah yeah eventually you just you just basically went fuck off mate i've got this massive thing and they threw out the court for a case right yeah yeah well, with this, all, we, that, all that build up and they didn't bother to send a fucking representative from the job center no to, to back their case up and then the guy took the entire chunk of paperwork that they had and threw it in the bin. We've had that on every single, every court case we've been through, every um, tribunal we've had to go through, everything. No one's ever been represented by the people who are, you know, taking us there. Well, exactly, yeah, because they know they don't have a case. Yeah, and it gets thrown, but think of the cost. Six months some of these things take to, to get through and all these people and all this, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go to court and there's a judge there and all the rest of it. That's costing. Again, I, I reckon they do that to drain the victim of the money. Possibly, yeah. Because cause they, they probably think, well, we, you know, we, we, can, we can make do with you know, yeah. th this money, this court cost being... Well, you don't have to pay to go to a tribunal. And do you know, by the way, now, you know, my wife and I look after Elizabeth at home. Yeah. So we're saving... Yeah, yeah. We save the government about 120 grand a year yeah. by having her at home even though they pay for stuff. When you work it all out, we save them about 120, 130 Sorry. grand a year by having her at home. Yeah. They're now charging us monthly for her care. What the care you're doing? Well, part of her package is that she gets, we get nurses that come here to help my wife, you know, do showering, dressing and all that kind yeah. of thing. Uh, apart from the fact that my wife trains a lot of the nurses that come here on the new equipment and all that, which we don't charge for, they just get sent here and my wife trains them and then they go off and do their job. We're getting charged for those nurses coming here. And being trained. Being trained by my wife and learning their sent job. Sent them an invoice. <laughs> yeah. What? On, yeah. How, on their trainings. What? Yeah, my, because of the, my daughter's quite unique condition, yeah. what they try and do is they try and send new staff here first to learn sort of the most... Like the the peg feeding, the machines she has to use, you know, all her special needs. So my wife takes them through all that, and eventually, after a few weeks, they go off and do their own thing elsewhere. Have uh, Have you paid the fine? You've been paying the. Well, it's not fine. We d we pay for it every month. Oh, yeah. Um, is it like a big amount of money, or is it just? No, I mean they nine. It's nine pound forty a week. Oh, okay. But the thing is, see, it pisses me off because they pay uh, they pay mobility. Right, yeah, so yeah. they pay for our fuel yeah. to and from respite only. They don't pay for fuel anywhere else, so we have to claim that fuel. Mm -hmm. That fuel works out at thirty-six pound a month or whatever, something like that. So they yeah, yeah. they give us that, and then this care thing is about thirty-four pound a month. So I said, well, we'll just take it out of there. So they yeah. pay us some mobility money, and then they take out the they care. take it away immediately. Yeah, basically. So they've had to set up. I've had to set up an account. And they've had to set up a, a method by this happening. So it's costing them probably More seven money. or eight quid yeah. to administer this to, to, to get their nine quid. So I said, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? Don't give us that. Yeah, just, just give us the difference. Us money. And then, you know, yeah. we're square. But they, they, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Uh, what are you, Jason? It's, I mean, I, I guess I'm probably the luckiest person here in the respect that I don't think I've had a situation like that not not mm. a big one that i can't yeah, yeah. think of um but i just in general i'm really disappointed that systems like this exist yeah like don't don't you find it funny that um the government always talks about how uh, these systems need to be cracked down on and refined so that people can't exploit the system 
but then it turns out the people who actually need it are the ones who end up getting screwed out of these reforms. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because if someone's not, as Paul said, if someone's not mentally well enough to look after themselves, how are they going to do it to sort of get the right care? Yeah, they need? how are they going to fiddle the system? It's mm. I, and I would say this quite honestly that the system that I, we've had to follow over the years is what's kept me out of work. Mm. It's what's made me mentally the way I am, you know, dealing with shit because of what we have to deal with my daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's what's caused my daughter to suffer and it's what's caused my wife to suffer. Yeah. So the system has caused us great suffering over the years when in fact it should have been completely there for helping us not yeah. to suffer. Yeah. And that's been for 16 plus years so we're going to we we'll do something about it this year. That's very good. Definitely. Let's um let's end, let's end that uh, segment before we all get too depressed. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, was a hopeful yeah. note to end it on. Okay. Yeah, it was. Well, a helpful note to end it on, I think, Stick it to is, the is that we are doing something, and I have noticed that there are some people in Parliament who are now looking at this quite seriously. Mm, yeah. And it's I think, nice to see some people do care about yeah. it in government. Yeah, and I think if with the right people in the right place, things could improve. There's an optimistic yeah, note for the future. I don't know if I told you about my neighbour, well, my old neighbour now, um, he has a page on Facebook called Darcy's Dreams, and I think I told you about him, didn't yeah. they? Due yeah. to NHS neglect, his daughter was was killed. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, the, the local MP for, for us, I can't remember her name now, but she Fiona. actually mentioned them in mm. the Houses of Parliament, right. and she's making sure that they will get justice for what, what has happened. Yeah, and it's good. now been, I think she, Darcy would be three years old now. No, four years old. And it's been going on that long. And it right. was down to the fact that they had their call downgraded Right, and it's got to the point now as well where his partner can't have children. Great. So they've they're not only have they ruined her life, they've killed th- their child. That's horrible. And oh. he's been affected by it mentally, but he's doing it for his partner yeah. because she's the one that's been affected the most. Mm. But um, yeah, um, the good thing is now he's they've got the backing from the MP, mm. and she's been rallying so much. Like every time she's in the House of the Parliament, she mentions it. Yeah, you know, she wants justice for. For him. Well, I think we should search for justice. We, we've been persecuted for, for years. Years and years and years. Yeah. We shouldn't have been. Nah. Well, I think we should uh, I think we should move on now. Yeah, yeah let's Go do for it. <laughs> Rise up. <laughs> See you guys later. Rise up. March in the streets. Yes. Set fire to the government. <laughs> Fuck them up the arse <laughs> with the cock the of justice. The government's up, please. Hello, it's time for... Phallus. Phallus. Quinton's quandary. Stick my phallus inside, Alice. Aha! Aha! Hello, yeah, I'm just putting yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Actually, before we start, we were talking about animals earlier. Yeah. Um, there was a brilliant report in a paper <laughs> when we had um, we had really bad. I think I've mentioned this before in the podcast, even perhaps. But r- if I'm boring you, remind me. Um, <clears throat> there was uh, all the uh, rain we had. Mm. Yeah. And some rivers up north burst their banks, and there was a report in the paper that said <coughs> thirty thousand pigs had been washed away off this farm. I don't know. 30,000 pigs. That's a lot of pigs. Yeah, so there was a big thing about it and uh, people were sending money to sort of, you know, that's a lot of pigs to lose. I, I, I just want you guys to close your eyes right now and imagine that scene with the sounds. 30,000 30, pigs floating away. But when uh, when this farmer was then questioned after people had raised money and put everything on Facebook, he said, oh, no, 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 no. It was 30 sows and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> so the reporter that did the original report misinterpreted it and put 30,000 oh, pigs God. not 30 that sows so and pigs <laughs> <laughs> so it's more like that's yeah. a meme in itself <laughs> that is <laughs> it's, like, anyway, it's, like, it's like the fork Quintus Quandries Quintus it's an interesting one this um, imagine yourself I, I often do. Right. Someone in your life, yeah. yeah, doesn't matter who it is, whether it's a relative, Damn. friend, whoever, Ash. who you you really believe in, you trust, uh, Definitely best not person Ash, you know, you would do anything for, you'd lay your life down for them. Not you Jason, just, Absolutely. And then you're sitting at home watching the TV and a news report came on of a very serious incident and they were looking for these people on these CCTV images mm-hmm. and yeah, which yeah. you recognised as this person who you would have laid your life down for and they're mm-hmm. asking for anyone that has information on this to contact the police. You don't know what the yep. incident is. They just said the police are looking. What do you do? 
I would contact the person and ask about it, and then I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't go to the police. But if they then said to you, "Yes, I did do that," or what, what? What is the incident? Let's say it's it's murder. No. Murder. I don't think I would for murder. Suspected for murder. Murder. Not. They're not saying. They're looking for them for their inquiries. I don't think because mm, it. If so, so I ring my friend and they said they actually did kill someone. Well, they said I was involved, but don't tell anyone. I wouldn't tell anyone. If it was someone I really genuinely cared that much for. But I don't think there's anyone in the world that I do care that much for. I, do, I care about friends a lot, don't get me wrong, but there's, I don't think there's anyone I'd lay, necessarily lay down my life for. If it was someone I cared that much about but I w- who... I, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't tell the police. If it was someone I cared about that much, I, it was would, me. I would turn around and say to that individual that I would give them a set amount of time to go to the police themselves. Right. I'd say to them, you know, you've done wrong, I can't condone what you've done, but it's down to you to like go to the police, but I'm going to give you, say, like seven days to do so. If you don't, I will contact the police. So you would? So I'd give them the option to, to let their conscience the say to them, thing. like, do the decent thing and hand yourself in, but I'd say to them, I'll give you this amount of time, but I'll if you don't do it in that set amount of time, I've got no choice but to because it's the law. Yeah. Yeah. As much as I care about that individual, I'd never like cover up, especially if it was murder. I don't. I, it's, trouble is, because if, if but if then being saying that, really... I'd still support that individual. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If they're being I really, really, I probably yeah. wouldn't agree with what they've done. It depends on. But I'd if, still if being care about really... that person enough to be yeah. for there for them, support them. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say because if they're being as as you say as evasive as they are. We don't know if they've killed someone or if they're a witness or if, like, they yeah. saw someone do it and didn't, like, say anything. Or it's one of their friends who told them, you know. Jason, you don't know what the situation is. It's hard to say what I would do because I'm not in the situation. Yeah. Well, th- this, is, this is part one of my yeah. quandary. Mm-hmm. But I feel so like you would... Personally, I believe in doing what's right more than I believe in, like, friendship. Yeah, that sounds really shitty. Well, no, no, because that's why I said like, that's reasonable. That person, the opportunity to do the I, right thing. I like if if I phoned up someone and I asked them about it and they said, "Yeah, I killed someone." Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to live with myself if I then you know kept that under wraps. I don't think I could do that. Right. So part two of the quandary. Part two okay. of the quandary is you then rung this friend, and they said no, nothing to do with me. But you were certain that the image you saw, and they said, no, it's definitely not me. If it's someone I trusted enough, to the point where I would lay down my life for them, and they they, they say, and they are adamant in the fact it's not them, then I, I see no reason why they would lie to me, even if yeah. it does look like them. I believe you know? them. So I believe them. And if the police turn up and you door say, have you seen this person with a picture of them? Do you know this person? We're looking for them. Do you have a name for the person? And they say his name? And they gave you their friend's name. Then, and they'd then I'd be suspicious. Yeah. If if, yeah. if I if at that point if at that point there's been proof adamant proof that he but if, if he said he didn't do it, I have no reason to believe he did. Because we, we, all we've got is some blurry CCTV footage. Especially yeah, exactly. if, if they come to if, yeah, but if they like. came to my door with a picture of him and name, then I feel like at that point you've proven that you can't trust this person as much as you thought you could. Yeah. And they, they've betrayed that trust, so I think it's worth telling them. Yeah, I, th- I think, again, yeah. it's like the... Uh, that's like the point where you, you have to turn around and... But again, at the end of the day, I don't know if I would... I, I don't know if I would say anything. Mm. But even at that point, I know they lied, lied to me to save their own back. But, but if you went back to them and said, look, they came to my door, and they said, no, I definitely didn't do anything, but don't tell them... I'll them take them on Jeremy Kyle and make them <laughs> do a lie detector test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friend killed my nan. <laughs> The results are in. You did kill his nan. You did. Get off my stage. Yeah. The baby is not yours. Jeremy uh, Kyle is the talk show Hitler. Yeah, it, true. So it's it's really weird that you you brought up this quandary uh, today when Why? well just last week we had a really he weird someone. similar incident happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't really talk about. No. On is there a part three of this? You did, you did say Th- yeah. there isn't a part three. But it's um, just, it's just it's weird. An that it came it's an interesting up idea. It's, See, yeah, it's, it's, it's one it's, that we've talked about a couple be- of times yeah. before. I believe, like in this situation, it's hard to say what you would do because you've not been in the situation yeah. before. 
mm. you know what I mean? I I have a feeling that I'd have to I'd have to go with what you know what yeah. what my gut says. And I my feel gut like says that I I'd have to yeah I'd have to go with what I feel was right. I feel like I'd swing the other way because I'm very protective of my friends and I wouldn't want them to go to jail. Okay. Ash, you swing both ways. Okay, part three. Oh, there is a part three. Oh, there is a part three. You lied to me. Part three, which is the ride never has ends. actually happened. All good trilogies yeah. come in threes. Has actually happened to me personally okay. yeah. on a couple of occasions. So you've gone through this. The, the first option was, do you tell the police if you know? So yes. If they've said to you, definitely not me, definitely not me, nothing to do with it, but the police are still looking for this person, and you say at the end of the day, I would give them up or give them chance to hand themselves in. Mm -hmm. Let's say, go through court, they were found guilty and served a little bit of time yeah. for the... Yeah, yeah. Whatever. They weren't found, say, a murder, but it was something... There was there was grounds for a jury to give them certain yeah, amount yeah, of time yeah. in mm -hmm. jail mm -hmm. to serve the punishment for a part of the crime that they allegedly yeah. committed. If that person then came out and said to you, I, I really didn't do it, I was totally innocent, I've been, I've been put in jail for... Uh, Five, you know, ten for nothing. years, yeah. yeah. Or for six months or a year, or, and I didn't do it, and they've been tarred with the brush of having a criminal record, but they still say to you, I didn't do it, and you told the police, that, you know, gave them my I details. I said I wouldn't do it. <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, they've, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gone through that yeah, process, yeah. they did get, this, and then they've come out and said, no, I was completely innocent, and I've been... Um, Mistrust, you know, mis um, miscarriage of justice. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I think. I mean, it's not really my I, problem. If I'd gone through the point of, if, if that's a really got, shitty yeah. thing to say. If I'd got to the but point like, where, if I'd got to the point where the police came to my door asking for him by name with picture. Yeah. You, I, you've done that. He's gone to court. He's been yeah. found guilty of yeah, some yeah. part what of I'm it. What I was saying, if that's point of it, then. You've got to say what would he, what would he done in my situation? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's. I I feel like I feel like it's perfectly justified if you've got enough grounds to to think like, uh, yeah. you know, think, yeah, yeah. oh, he's got something to do with this. He had some part in this, and then he comes back and says like, you know, why did you give my name to the authorities? You know, it's like you, you said, did all I you had could nothing in to that do situation. With it. Yeah. Again, you you did all you could in that situation. You, I feel like. Would you then believe? him and think you did the wrong thing or I mean regardless of whether down, we did or not it comes down to evidence I don't, day, think, I don't think couldn't I couldn't do anything about yeah. it I don't think at that you point know. the um, I, I, I it comes down to the evidence at the end of the day like it, neither of ha, not, neither of us have proof either way to believe our claims you know yeah, yeah. like all you say, all you can say is the police came to my door with a picture of you in your name and all he can say is I didn't do it yeah, you know, there's this just a complete stalemate. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no push either way, really. Yeah, I think in that incident instance, I wouldn't ever stop me. Being friend, it would be, right. it would be, he was, he was guilty until proven innocent. Like that's that's just the way it would have to be. I mean, a very good friend of mine served time for something he said he didn't do, mm. mm -hmm. and I, I was questioned beforehand and gave whatever information I had to. Yeah. It, it wasn't. A, he didn't get put away as a result of what I said or anything, obviously. But um, I had an opinion on it. Yeah. And all the way through, it, I had an opinion on it. And afterwards, I had an opinion on it. But I'm being told that my opinion isn't isn't correct, mm. and a misjustice has been carried out. But I mean, again, that's like as shitty of a thing to say. It's not. It's not your problem. It isn't my problem. No, it, it no. isn't your problem. And you, you can't like you can't get hung up on that. You've got your own life to live. Maybe my friend should have put a better lawyer. Yeah, yeah but if, <laughs> if if your friendship continues in the future, how do you tr How do you do the trust thing? Is there? I mean, it would just, are be, they it, lying? It would just be it would just be a different kind of relationship. At yeah, that point. I think I think it would just strain the relationship. I don't think you could be friends with that person. I no, I yeah. I feel uncomfortable with if, them. I I think I it, okay. It depends. If, if I was the one who turned him in, I think I could, but it'd be a different kind of relationship. Mm. But if he got arrested anyway, no matter what I said, even if I didn't say anything, then I feel like it'd be the same sort of thing yeah. for me. You know, tricky one though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Dan, <laughs> weird, Dan, come back. To us. Are you okay, Dan? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. Yeah, no, mm. that's quite a good subject. Mm. Let's move on. It's a good quandary. I only try and get quandary. Do, you know, do you know what I'd do? I'd channel provoking. away in the Jim Carrey and just go, Stop breaking the law, no. asshole! <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Perfect. Next segment of this 
Terry's Chocolate Orange Next of a segment. podcast. Unfortunately, it's the last segment. Oh. Yay! Do, and do you, Lil, do you love Dan enough to give him your last segment? <laughs> I do. I would give Dan any segment last he wanted. Segment. <laughs> I would give Dan, you know you know the bits that are in the middle, like cold together? I'd give Dan oh. that bit of oh. the best bits. Oh, yeah. deep throat it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Today, unfortunately, is the end of the end of the show. It's been a good one. We've had we've had happy moments. Knowing me, knowing we've had you. Sad moments. <laughs> we've had thoughtful moments. We've had Dan making blowjob noises down the <laughs> microphone. Uh, let's, let's, let's let's start by doing our goodbyes. Hello, I'm Ashley. You can find me online. Uh, goodbye, I'm Ashley. At, uh, <laughs> Lon Free Enigma. That's Lone Enigma. Lon Free Enigma on Twitter and YouTube. I post shit. There's a new video coming out he soon. He literally posts shit like Reader's Digest. Yeah. And also, you can find me on Facebook at uh, Dan Cameron. There you go. And to my left. Hello, my name is Jason Gould. You can find me on the YouTube channel, Jason Gould, where I post random shit that no one really cares about. You can also find me on the other YouTube channel, uh, Vault Entertainment. There is a streaming channel called Editor Streams now. It's not called Vault Archives, it's called Editor Streams. That's where I Did upload all of my VODs. Uh, and you can find me on Twitch TV, where I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7.30 GMT Sick. PM. Um, I'm on Twitter, at Editor as well. He's also playing uh, that, Fagan and Oliver. You know, uh, yeah, and come to the Crescent and watch me be Fagan. T- t- five months ago. <laughs> five months ago. Fake him what? Oh, fuck off. Oh, an Fagan. orgasm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can't to the really fake an orgasm, though. We can try. Uh, no, you, can, you uh, can't. F- men can't fake an orgasm because it's just like it just happens. You need the goo. <laughs> Dan, Close. you can follow me on Facebook uh, under the name Helen Gould. Um, apparently, I've got a new book out called. The S- <laughs> oh shit! I just morphed into someone else's body there. Sorry. It's called didn't The Stallion. You didn't even do the voice. I am Helen Gould. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's good to listen to this, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Paul. Yes, you can find me uh, hiding in the bushes. <laughs> and uh, you can follow me, but I'll scratch your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, and uh, don't forget to ring your mum. She misses you. Be good to yourself and each other. <laughs> yes. Three cunts in the city here doing nothing but it's a tripod. I 